This campaign over the past four decades, even when one candidate was heavily favored, there was a governor's debate. But as of right now, there won't be one this year. The Kasich campaign cites the implosion of the Fitzgerald campaign for its decision to forego a formal debate. Democrats accuse Kasich and other statewide Republican candidates of ducking debates that could hash out real issues affecting Ohioans. Gene Krebs, why not have just one debate for John Kasich? I know politically he doesn't have to. He's got a big lead. It's risky. But just have one well, debate. There's two reasons. One, he's not stupid. Okay. <laughs> Number two, you have to debate a credible candidate. Now, we're talking here about Fitzgerald, who could have gotten his driver's license, literally, as I've been told, in the same building by walking down some spikes of stairs and going into the BMV office and getting his license renewed. He's in the same category right now as Libertarians in the Green Party. He's yeah, simply he's not right. He's not, he, I mean, he's, which is the core number for any Democrat in Ohio. They're always going to get a third. Actually, he's scoring less than your prescribed third. So he's not being a credible candidate. And so at the, he's, well, why? Why bother? Well, is that, the, is that the reason politicians, particularly candidates for governor, should debate or not debate? Because they don't believe the other major party candidate no. is credible. No. It's a fupa. They are... Do, they do not want to create an opportunity to stick their foot in their mouths when they have this thing won. I understand two sides of, of the argument. From a tactical side, I'm on the campaign. Let's win this thing. Let's not do anything. From the other side, as a, as a citizen, what does it say when the, t the leaders on the tickets are not willing to exchange intellectually in the marketplace their ideas about governance. But not only in this election, but all the down ticket candidates are not, are, are not debating either. So, I mean, it's a heck of a statement. Yeah. But, uh, his, the historical precedent is, uh, of course, since 1978 when Jim Rhodes wouldn't uh, debate that young whippersnapper from Lakewood as Lieutenant Governor Dick Celeste. We've had debates, whether it's been, you know, a wide margin in the polls or not. Uh, you look at 82 with Dick Celeste and Bud Brown, you know, that was a blowout. 86, uh, you know, Rose tried again, that was a blowout. Uh, certainly Voinovich against Birch in 94, they still debated. Birch got, you know, skunked a lot more than Fitzgerald ever is going to. Taft against Tim Hagen. Uh, which included a natural all-party candidate, mm -hmm. as I recall. So the historical precedent is we have had debate because it's been viewed as there are issues, important issues, to voters in this state. Even though this race may or may not be decided, they're important to talk and to have a public discourse about This is, this is another example, though, of where John Kasich um, doesn't, doesn't go down the natural path that most others do. I mean, he... Um, it last uh, campaign season, and, and this one, too, he's refused to... Re um, uh, release his income tax returns. Uh, he decided not to live in the governor's mansion. That was another kind of um, counter um, historical precedent. Mm -hmm. uh, so he, you know, he's the kind of guy who doesn't he doesn't um, just do things because there's a history to it. Wouldn't it be? You mentioned he's you know his presidential aspirations, possible presidential aspirations. That's coming around the corner. A year from now, they'll be lining up on the stage. All the Republican candidates for president debating. Wouldn't it be good practice? Low risk. Yeah, he might put his foot in his mouth, but he's not. Okay, that narrows the race to 20 points instead of 30. Wouldn't it be good practice for the governor to debate once? Just no, he's thinking he can, it, it, by not debating and continuing to build the lead and to paint his uh, opponent as not worthy of his time, you know, he can build his lead more. And there's a better upside for that yeah. than there is in taking a practice. I mean, um, he, he is campaigning run. now. He's telling Republican supporters that, that he wants a mandate. And, and now he frames it as a mandate for Ohio and what we're doing in Ohio. But obviously the, the, it would be a mandate for John Kasich as well because people in other states are going to look, oh, they, they, the Democrats had a weak candidate in Ohio. So they're going to say Ohio, a swing state, vital to a presidential election, and this guy just killed it. Yeah. But he, he, he painted a wonderful portrait, didn't he? He's painted that he's going to win and win big. The, uh, the conventions in his state, uh, in Cleveland, nobody has ever won the presidency without Ohio. No Republican, yeah. Yeah, no Republican. So, I mean, he's in the catbird seat to say that I am worthy. But, but whenever you see a governor's office catch what I call Potomac fever, okay, <laughs> they all, all of a sudden, he doesn't propose anything new, nothing dramatic, no real reforms. This governor, you just read out a partial, probably one-tenth of the stuff he's done in 
three years and 10 months, and it's just an amazing thing. So I've got no indication. I mean, if, it, he's not playing it safe on the policy, and that's what you do when you catch Potomac fever. All right. What is